Hi and welcome to a Vox Commando tutorial. Today I will be talking about how to use the Google Calendar plugin or ggcal plugin and specifically I will show you how to use calendar events um, that is to say events that are set in your Google Calendar to trigger Vox Commando events which are these events that show up in your history window and which can be used to start commands and do different things based on the information in the event, which are, which are called payloads. So the first thing you'll need to do is enable the plugin. You need to go into Options, Plugins, and turn that on. Save everything and restart Vox Commando. Now we have the Google Cal plugin appearing in our list. And you need to go into settings and enter your credentials. And then it should find your feeds. You have one feed for each calendar in your that's assigned to your account. And you can refresh this. You can select a feed to use as the default feed. This default feed doesn't apply to what we're talking about today. We're mostly interested in setting event timers. What that means is that the plugin will scan your Google Calendar, will scan certain feeds in your Google Calendar, and set timers so that when those calendar events are supposed to occur, um, Vox Commando will fire an event that appears in your history window. So I'm going to do some tests using the alerts feed of my calendar. So um, I'll do a test event in my calendar starting at uh, in a couple of minutes. So let's say at uh, 8.52 Test one, we'll call it. But we'll edit this event. We'll make it specifically at 8.52. And I'll just enter, uh, this is what it's all about. So I'll have a location and a description, and I'll save that. And it's important to note that this is in my alerts calendar, or my alerts feed, as they like to call it. Now when I click on set timers with default feeds, this is really used as a test, but you'll see that it scans my feed and sets a timer for one minute and one second from now and tells me the name of the calendar event. And it sets another timer for something that occurs uh, later on in the week. So what that means is that in one minute I'm gonna, going to get a calendar event appearing here. While we're waiting, I'll just clear this and I'll explain about what we have here. This would allow you to ask your triggers to go off a little bit before the time that they're set for. You might find that useful for some reason. This is for dealing with events that are all day events because when you just create an event in your Google Calendar, uh, it doesn't necessarily have a time associated with it. Google actually assigns a time of zero o'clock for those. So if you want to override that to have a, have your all day events trigger at, you know, for for example, at 6.30 in the morning so that you get alerts for the day before going to work or something, you could do that. So our event was triggered here uh, on schedule. You can see that it went off at 8.52 and by Selecting the main window, focusing the main window, and then hovering the mouse over 
our event, we'll see if there are any payloads associated with it, and we'll see if the event is assigned to any commands. So you can see here that there are, where it says command triggered at colon at the bottom, that it's currently not assigned to any commands. But we do see a bunch of payloads. So the first payload is the name of the event. So this corresponds to this actual name of the event. I'll just bring this up here. So we would basically assign this event to a command and then any time any event occurred in our alerts calendar, we would get this event, ggcal.event.alerts. And since we have other feeds, if for example, I had an event that occurred on the Vox commando feed, and if I had Vox commando selected here in the list of feeds that are scanned, then we would have an event ggcal.event.voxcommando for that calendar feed event. Now going back to the settings, we have here this option, which is quite important for what we're trying to do here, is to have the plugin automatically scan your calendar every 30 minutes in case you've made edits to the calendar. So what this does is every 30 minutes, it'll basically do the equivalent of clicking on this button which scans your feeds and creates timers for all of your events when it's done automatically. It'll just quietly update in the background, although it will show you for debugging purposes, it'll show you uh, when it started scanning your calendar feed and what timers were set based on uh, what it was able to find in your calendar. Okay, so how do we use the events? Like any other event, you would drag this onto a command. So I have a very simple tree here, and I'll just create a new group. I'll call it calendar alerts. And let's call this first test. So to associate the event, we drag it onto this command. Then you see it appears in the tree and we see that the command icon changes to, to show that it has an event associated with it. Now what will happen when this event runs is up to us, but remember that we will have access to all of those payloads and those payloads will depend on uh, how we've defined our event in the Google Calendar. So we may not have payload three, the description, or we may not have payload six, the location, but we should have payloads four and five, which are the date and time of the event. Probably the, the most useful payload will actually be the event name, test one. And you can use this to do different things depending on the name of the event. So if we look back at our calendar, we might have um, at 12 o'clock, we might have an event, eat lunch. Let me move that over to tomorrow. And down here, we'll call it go to sleep. And we, when we go back to our plugin settings and force a, uh, an update, you can see that in 54 minutes we'll have this um, event going off, go to sleep, and tomorrow, 15 hours from now, we'll have the eat lunch command going off. And this one was already in there. Go to sleep and eat lunch will both be triggering the ggcal.eventalerts event, but they'll have a different payload one. This one will have, for payload one, it'll be go to sleep, and this one, for payload one, it'll be eat lunch. So we could use that to do different things. This is actually
anything in the alerts feed is going to trigger this command. But one thing we could do is say if a equals b payload 1 equals eat lunch, then do a bunch of stuff. Play our favorite lunch music. <laughs> uh, do some text-to-speech, whatever it is that we want to do. And we could then create another one for uh, what to do if it's equal to go to sleep, and so on and so forth. So that makes sense if you have just a few different things that you want to do in that calendar feed. But if you really created a lot of different things, um, this is a bit more advanced, but it's actually a very powerful, useful way to do it is to have this event trigger another event and use the payload one, which is the, the name of the calendar event, such as eat lunch or go to sleep, use that as the new event name. So I'll show you how to do that. And hopefully we can do a test without confusing you too much. Usually when you see something working, it kind of comes together. Um, so again, anytime anything in that calendar feed uh, occurs, it's going to trigger this event, it's going to trigger this command. So what we want to do here is trigger a new event and call it, let's say, cal alerts dot payload one. So in the morning, On our alerts feed, we're going to have eat breakfast going off. It's going to trigger this event, trigger this command, which will then trigger cal.alerts.eatbreakfast. And at lunch, it's going to go off, trigger the same command, but that's going to trigger a new event, cal.alerts.eatlunch. That's because this event has payload one which is the name of the event. And I'll show you here, I'll clear this window, how this would work. You can do a test with a payload. Eat lunch. It's gonna trigger this event, cal.alerts.eatlunch. So now we can create a command for each one of these items in this calendar feed. So this is sort of the master call it a long name if you want. Then we would be creating a bunch of other commands such as eat lunch. It's going to be triggered by calalerts.eatlunch. And I'm going to control drag this down here. We have another one, eat breakfast. Obviously, you got to make sure that you spell your event names exactly the same as your calendar event names, or it won't work. Or you wait until that event goes off, and then you can drag it in. Certainly later, if you're troubleshooting and it looked like it didn't work, you can, uh, when, when this event goes off, if it doesn't fire the command correctly at that point, you could drag it in to make sure that you've got everything spelled correctly. Then you would edit this command to do whatever you would do at lunchtime. And edit this command to do whatever you would do So I hope that makes sense. I will create a final test command that um, we will trigger uh, in the way that I'm describing here, just so that you can see it in action. So I'll just call this one today final. I'm again, control dragging here. I could have also created an event from scratch using this dropdown. 
and it's going to be called today final and I'll do a message which will be my goodbye message do a test so we should see this if our test works properly and so I'm going to copy and paste here to make sure I put the spelling correct. It's going to be called today final. And I'll go today at 9.06. It's going to be called today final. Better make it 9.07 to be safe. One important thing to note about events is that you do need to save and then close the editor and then it will rebuild and reload your events and whatnot and we will need to manually do this because if we waited 30 minutes it wouldn't grab that update that we just did so you'll see oh did i spell that right no oh, no no Google renamed it because it took today to mean do it today. <laughs> Save. And update this again. Okay. So in 34 seconds, we will have the today final event going off. And hopefully it will do what I say it will do. Yay, it works. So a quick recap. Because our calendar event was in the alerts calendar or the alerts feed, our event was ggcal.event.alerts. And because the name of the calendar event was today final, the command created a new event called calalerts.alerts today final, which in turn triggered this command, which showed the text. So I know this doesn't cover everything that there is to cover about the Google Calendar plugin, but I hope that it gives you the tools to be able to do everything that you will want to do with the timer events. And thank you for watching.